Yes, sir. I just wanted to let you know that I happen to have some knowledge of people that are going to be coming and visiting the homes of the uh, Board of Supervisors and basically executing their families. Should be fun. I have been a Maricopa County Supervisor for probably over eight years now. I was chairman before, during, immediately after, all the way to January 6th. And the threats never, the threats never abated. Hey, Clint, you f***ing liar. We're going to f***ing hang you, traitor. We're going to make an example out of you. Yes. You altered my election, you piece of The ones that trouble me most are, I know you. Do you not understand that we work in the restaurants you eat at? Do you not understand that that we know where your kids go to school? It's it's horrific, and I'm trying to keep my family away from it. But um, you know, and to tell you the truth, it really troubles me when people that know me and have known me since I've been young uh, are capable of promoting some of this. I believe people have gone down this track so deep that no matter what is said by myself or what happens to any of us supervisors, the belief will always be that we somehow had a hand in rigging an election. This election will not be stolen from us. I had worked seven months worth of time doing things that I could do for the top of the ticket and President Trump. Maricopa County Supervisor Clint Hickman. Thank you, Clint. Good job, Clint. You know, just a couple weeks before the election, uh, President Trump came out here. And still, I'm extremely proud that he called me out in the crowd and thanked me for everything that I tried to accomplish for him. So I thought about that uh, while I was watching. Uh, and that is Arizona. If you look at the numbers right now and drill down, Joe Biden has a lead by about seven points with three quarters of the vote tabulated. I As I was watching deeper and deeper into the night, it wasn't looking good. Uh, and then when Fox News called it, I had to pick my jaw up. The Fox News decision desk is calling Arizona for Joe Biden. That is a big get for the Biden campaign. It's then, also- then we started to get reports, I believe, that night that some people started trickling over to Maricopa County Election Center and questioned the vote. Count our votes! Count our votes! Do your duty for the American people! And then it really sped up in the, in the succeeding nights that then it started to invite some people that, you know, were on one hardcore a part of the spectrum, and I was worried about, if I was already worried about potential violence at poll sites, I would, got super worried when people started showing up and, and demonstrating between people whose cars are parked, they're just trying to do their job, which was to count votes. This is about your rights are being taken away from you right now as we speak. And it seemed like I was in this never-never land of answering three questions to one representative, and then somebody else would call, being ginned up with information that, that I couldn't refute yet, um, if ever. Uh, because some of this stuff is so outlandish, you almost say, why am I taking any moment of my life to answer that? There's, I don't know about Italian satellites. I don't. They're trying to steal America from us, guys. Here. From Sharpies to boats, right? This is real. And uh, with that came threats. Threats of violence to, to my staff. Threats of violence to anybody wearing a Maricopa County badge. Did they protect our vote? No. Did the GOP protect our vote? No. How did if we, we lose an election, we lose an election. That's it. Okay. Hey, Clint, it's Kelly Ward. I just talked to President Trump, and uh, he, he would like me to talk to you and also see if he needs to give you a call to discuss what's happening on the ground in Maricopa. Hey, Clint, it's Rudy Giuliani. 
I was very um, happy to see that there's going to be a forensic audit of the machines. And I really wanted to talk to you about it a bit. The president wanted me to give you a call, all right? Hello, sir. This is the White House operator. I was calling to let you know that the president's available to take your call if you're free. If you could please give us a call back, sir, that'd be great. You have a good evening. That was the second call that I received uh, from the White House switchboard. But in a free democracy, elections result in some people's candidate losing. I was disappointed in the outcome of a couple races, and I was extremely happy with the outcome in others. But I'm not going to violate the law or deviate from my own moral compass, as some have pushed me to do, and some have probably pushed others to do here. I had already suffered through uh, people coming to my house one, on one Sunday night, 90 strong. I'd had enough, honestly, and I was frustrated. And leading up to January 6th, which was a Wednesday formal day, I knew that we were going to be motioning forward and, and instituting a new chairman of the board. And I thought as I was driving uh, that morning, um, after living through all of this, I thought, I can't help it, but this albatross is going to take, be taken off my shoulders. Mr. Uh, Chair. Uh, <laughs> Bill. I will say it. You save lives. We'll never know how many, but you save many, many lives because of your leadership. And I don't know what's more important than that. But not only did you save lives, but I think, and I'll say it, you helped save democracy in Maricopa County this year. You stood up as a man, as a leader, to defend the process, a process that is about to be challenged today in Washington, D.C. But I have no doubts that we did the right thing. So I appreciate that. And I'm going to say that that should wrap it up, uh, Bill, because I, I can't I can't take it. So um, as I was driving home, I heard there was some protests going on in Washington, D.C. I roll in, and there were two Maricopa County Sheriff's deputies waiting on me in my driveway. And threats had been called in during this time frame, and they wanted to talk to me about it. And I'm talking to Marty, the one in charge of my protection. Um, and he, uh, he, he said, they're, um, hey, they're storming the Capitol. I like looked and said, what? And uh, my wife opens the front door and said, are you done talking? You need to come in here and see this. And um, I walked in on the big screen. It was the first things of people beating on the door and br breaking the windows. I mean, how can people behave like this? And I'm watching that. And then Marty said, you're not staying in this house tonight. You please do not stay in this house tonight. And I said, I'm out. I'm out. My wife and I started packing bags uh, for the kids, and we went to an undisclosed location. I've had probably three or four different people uh, tell me uh, just within the last month they always thought that maybe they could give their time and effort to run for public office and, and they are uh, reticent to do it now. And they're like, I don't know if I, I could put up with it. I was like, well, I don't know how much longer I can put up with it either, but if we don't have good people doing it, then bad people will do it. And then we have serious problems.